Welcome back everyone to the final part of lecture five about volumes using cross-sectional slicing. Um, I wanna look at one more example. Again, these things can be kind of challenging, so it's good to have lots of examples to see uh, how one can approach this thing. Uh, so let's describe the solid in question and then try to find the volume of said solid. So imagine a wedge is cut out of a circular cylinder of radius four by two planes, okay? And then there's an illustration of what's going on here down below, which is courtesy of James Stewart's calculus textbook. Um, one of the planes is just gonna be uh, perpendicular to the axis of the cylinder. So basically, like you see in the illustration right here, if you think of the bottom circle of this cylinder, I should use a different color as white blends too much with the background. If you think of this bottom right here uh, as the XY plane, that's one of the planes we're gonna to use to slice this thing. And then the other plane is gonna come through the x-axis of the xy plane at a 30 degree angle or, or pi sixth, if you prefer radians in such a, like this. And so let me kind of erase what I wrote here. And so you try to see that there's this wedge that's cut out of the cylinder. So we're trying to describe this region right here. Okay, and so it's going to come about by using cross-sectional slices, which if we look at cross-sections, and so let's give a little bit of description of the base. So from a different perspective, we're looking at the x-axis right here. Uh, the y-axis comes up right here as well, like so. And then we're going to have a semicircle that lives inside this x-y plane. So, and so what we're trying to do is we're trying to describe this semicircle right here. Now, as the circle, the base circle is going to have radius of four. Uh, that was given up in the description right here. This circle will have the equation y equals the square root of 16 minus x squared, uh, like so. So this point right here would be four comma zero. Uh, this point right here would be negative four comma zero in terms of this description. All right, so this kind of gives us the base of our, of our solid. And what we're gonna be doing is stacking on top of this base cross sections perpendicular to the x-axis. So we're seeing cross sections being stacked on the base like this. And the height of these cross sections will depend on where we are in the semicircle. Uh, but the cross sections are gonna look like right triangles, uh, right triangles resembling this shape over here. And we've chosen these right triangles so that the angle right here is going to be a 30 degree angle. All right. And so these, these cross sections, let me clean this thing up a little bit. Uh, if we now focus on the cross section right here, right, we have to find the area of the area of a triangle. It's a right triangle. So the area is just going to be one half base times height, where here is your base and here is your height. Um, the base is just going to be the y coordinate. So we're going to get one half y times the height. How can we figure out the height of this thing? Well, that's where the 30 degree angle comes into play. Um, a tangent ratio would be very useful here. Tangent of 30 degrees is going to equal opposite over adjacent. The opposite side is h, the adjacent side is y. Uh, clearing the denominators, we actually see that the height will equal uh, y times tangent of 30 degrees. And if you don't remember that off the top of your head, um, or you don't have a calculator, hopefully you remember sine and cosine of 30 degrees, right? So tangent is sine of 30 degrees over cosine of 30 degrees. Sine of 30 degrees is one half. And cosine of 30 degrees is root three over two. So if you simplify that thing, you end up with y over the square root of three, as so. And, and so that's going to be plugging in for the, the height of our, of our triangle over here. So we get y over the square root of 3. Now, some people have a pathological fear of having square roots in the denominator. So if you do need to rationalize it, I suppose uh, you can do so if you really feel necessary. Um, so if you were to rationalize the denominator, uh, you would end up with like a root 3 over, the, over 6. I don't see any need to have to do such a thing right there. So we're just going to leave it the way it is. Uh, so basically what I'm saying is the area 
is going to equal y squared over 2 times the square root of 3. That's going to be the area of one of these, one of these uh, triangles. But again, this is in terms of y. If we set up our integral, the volume of this wedge is going to be the integral of an area function a of x dx. And let's try to identify what the bounds of integration would be if we come back up here. Our x values is allowed to range anywhere in this spectrum right here from negative 4 to 4. So those are going to be the bounds of integration. We end up with x is negative 4 to 4. Well, notice that's, again, a symmetric interval. It feels very likely that we're going to be able to uh, use symmetry to simplify the integral here. We'll get back to that in just a moment. The area function, which we saw from before, y squared over 2 squared of 3, we can plug that in right here. So we end up with 2 times the integral from 0 to 4. We use symmetry. Um, y squared over 2 times the square root of 3 dx. So we can simplify things a little bit, like the 2 out in front cancels with this 2 right here. But we have to still deal with the y squared. How do we deal with y squared? We'll come up to the semicircle we had before, because the, this distance y, given by this point x comma y, uh, this y is constrained by this function right here. Uh, y equals 16, the square root of 16 minus x squared. Therefore, y squared will be 16 minus x squared. Uh, so if we insert that into uh, the integral here, we end up with the integral with 1 over the square root of 3. Sorry, 1 over the square root of 3 times the integral from 0 to 4. We get 16 minus x squared dx. And so integrate that thing. Uh, the antiderivative would look like, well, we get the constant 1 over square root of 3 in front. Uh, we're going to get 16x minus x cubed over 3 as we go from 0 to 4. Plug it in the 4, we're going to get uh, 16 times 4, which is 64, minus uh, 64 over 3. If you factor out the 64, which is common to everything, 64 over the square root of 3, we're left with 1 minus uh, 1 minus 1 third, the difference which is 2 thirds. And so then in the end, we would get 64 times 2, uh, which is 128, over the square root of 3 times 3, so 3 root 3. And so this would give us the exact volume of this wedge that we slice out of uh, that cylinder from above. We could approximate this if we wanted to, but I will, I will we'll be happy with exact values. We'd, we know how to throw this number into a calculator and go from there. And so that brings us to the end of lecture five. I appreciate everyone's uh, watching through these videos here about finding volumes using cross-sectional analysis using these integrals here. Um, if you like these videos, please do click the like button. Uh, feel free to subscribe so you learn more about videos that are created in the future. Um, if you have any questions about any of the content, either in this lecture, in previous videos, or in any part of this series, feel free to post your, comment, your questions in the comments here on YouTube, and I would be glad to reply to them and answer any questions you might have. Uh, check out the next video and learn some more about volume um, and how we can use integrals to calculate volume of solids. Uh, I'll see you then. Bye, everyone.